the document that will shock you. Hello, Martin North, John Adams, in the interest of the people. Hello, John, good to see you again. Hello, sir, how are you going today? Very good. Now, we've got a rather interesting discussion today about IMF documents. Yes, yes. Um, I, I have to congratulate you, Martin. I thought your interview with Eddie Hobbs from Ireland was, was very fascinating. Um, you know, I mean, like, even though I've read a lot of about the Irish stuff, I mean, having someone who was there um, in Ireland on the ground and can, and can sort of tell us what was life like in the lead up, what was life like during and what has happened since, uh, very illuminating. Um, I mean, we, we, had a, uh, we had a conversation last year with Sean Quinn and Sean um, was there prior to the crash and had, uh, had left the island and came here. So we got some insights from Sean, but, but, but Eddie took it to a whole new level. Um, and, and there was quite a few things that Eddie said that the parallels between Ireland and Australia, um, I mean, there were just things sort of like just whizzing through my head. I thought it, it'd be worth to have a conversation about those. But also um, he said in the interview that in 2007, the IMF, um, gave Ireland a clean bill of health. So I actually went off and read the IMF report um, and I was shocked with some of the content in that report and I thought, well, let's talk about some of these parallels between Ireland and Australia and let's talk about this IMF report that uh, the, the, the IMF issued in 2007. Yeah, great. And just on, on Eddie, uh, I think it's a remarkable interview actually because we were able to go through the whole cycle before, during and after the crash in Ireland and some of the things that Eddie highlighted, I think, are really, really important. We'll put a link through to that particular episode. Okay, John, so we've heard about the IMF and Ireland. We've heard about what the IMF said here. So what does that tell us? Uh, what does that tell us is, is that uh, the Irish were completely unprepared we are completely unprepared. I mean, this is why for the last two years I've been talk, banging on the doors of certain politicians in Canberra and saying that in the history of Australia, we have this shush. We have the complacency model. We have the should we right model. Uh, we don't prepare for things. We basically just sleepwalk into a crisis. Uh, and it would appear that, um, that, that, that you know, the parallels are so stark. It looks like we're going to be repeating history. And, and you, know, uh, you know, time will tell whether the decline in house prices in Sydney, Melbourne now. So there was, the data came out last week that said that the decline, the, the annual decline in house prices in Melbourne in the last 12 months was the biggest on record. For Sydney, it was the biggest since 1983. Now, in the last couple of days, Moody's in the US have said that this slump that we've seen, particularly in the share market in the last two months, it's only a minor blimp. And they think that uh, things will start to pick up going to 2019. Now, that is a lone voice. So it's either but potentially Armageddon has started and this is going to unravel throughout 2019, 2020. Or it could be that this is just a, a temporary slump um, and, 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 you know, uh, whether domestically or internationally and, and, and things could start to pick up uh, into 2019 because Moody's actually said that they think that things will pick up again going in over the next six months and that uh, uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve will get back to raising interest rates. So, so, so that that's a very big call. I was very surprised by that call. But it's either uh, the, the, the Armageddon has started, and we're going to see this unravel um, going forward, or or it could have another leg up, and it could sort of be it could be delayed for another twelve to eighteen months. Right. But meantime, we've got home prices beginning it continues to slide here in Australia. Right. No evidence that that's turning around at the moment. And the feedback loops of lower appetite from buyers to buy into the market, right? Lending still tight, which is why I still think that the trajectory of home prices is going to go down. And I still think my 20 to 30% peak to trough, irrespective of what happens internationally, is still a reasonable call. If that is true, then effectively we're on a slide that we can't stop and there's more downside ahead.
Yes, yes. Well, the, the one final point I will make is, I mean, Eddie talked about um, how you've got new housing, new housing estates, particularly, you know, um, quite a way from Dublin. Um, and basically, you, you don't have one or two buyers. Well, I mean, I mean, there are some newer housing states in southwest Sydney. Uh, and, and I had anecdotal feedback over the weekend that the developers are really struggling to find, um, you know, they are slashing prices. They are trying every trick in the book to, to get people to buy. They are getting no bids. Um, and in some cases, you have hundreds of houses in southwest Sydney just sitting idle. Um, um, and, and it's a very another parallel between what happened in, in, in some of these new developments in Ireland and what we are currently seeing um, now in west, southwest Sydney. Absolutely. Liverpool is down 23% on those new estates, right? And I believe that once you get over that 20% blip, as it were, then the next uh, move is definitely firmly down. So I think we're going to see more of that ahead. Worrying times, isn't it, John? Yes. We're getting close to the point where uh, all the warnings that I've been trying to, to make, you've been trying to make, um, are sort of come to fruition. And you know, uh, there are certain people who have listened to us for the last few years and who have made prudent uh, financial decisions to protect themselves. But, but just like Eddie said, certain when you get this wrong it's a life sentence i mean people 10 years on an island are still stuck in these mortgages um still being chased by lawyers and bankers or and, and a whole bunch of other vultures um and i suspect there are certain people in this country who have already been served a life sentence well hopefully those who've been following in the interest of the people are at least a little bit more forearmed john thank you very much for your time thank you